Hey, it's Ryan from Straight Ahead Samples. Something we've been asked quite a bit about over the years was if our sample libraries can be used with notation programs like Finale or Sibelius. While users have been able to get them to work to some extent, it hasn't really been utilizing the full capability that our libraries offer. That is until now. Enter Dorico by Steinberg. Dorico is a full-featured notation program from Steinberg that was introduced in 2016. It's been growing in popularity and improving in features ever since. One of the unique things about it is that it integrates a MIDI sequencer and mixer with score notation. It allows expression maps to communicate directly with third-party libraries to connect all the markings that a human would see, such as piano, forte, scoops and falls, marcados and accents, with the appropriate key switches and MIDI parameters that work with that library. One of the challenges of implementing our libraries with notation was that we feature something unique to us called Smart Delay. And Smart Delay puts our libraries into a kind of look ahead mode so that the sampler can have a full bar to analyze each phrase and then render an extremely realistic result. We've been working for several months now with a representative from Dorco to get to know how it works and bring you a playback template for Atomic Big Band The Horns, which is our most requested library to be used with notation programs. Okay, so here we are in Dorico with Atomic Big Band loaded. The playback template has already been loaded and we'll show you in another video how to do that. But Dorico has these different views up here. You can see play view, which is a lot like a DAW. And it has the VSTs loaded over here. You can see Atomic Big Band The Horns uh, is in contact. And there's Halion Sonic and Groove Agent, which come with uh, Dorico for free for playback of all other sounds. And with the playback template applied, um, all these things automatically load, as well as the expression maps. Let's take a brief peek at the expression maps. Um, these are the default that come with it, and here is Atomic Alto, and it has all of these things added in, as well as all these settings dialed in, um, already done for you. So let's go back to the blank score here, go to write mode, and let's enter some notes, and then play it back. And then I will add dynamics and articulations, and you will hear how each layer brings the music more to life and just how easy it is. All right, I'm going to switch Atomic Big Band uh, back over to real-time mode, which is the most like uh, any normal MIDI uh, sound library. And let's just hear what this uh, phrase sounds in real-time mode. All the notes are there, but it sounds like a typical MIDI library, not necessarily what we're going for. So now I'm going to turn on Smart Delay and hear what that alone does. And then I will add other articulations and dynamics after that to bring it to life. Night and day difference. Now let's hear what happens when we add a marcato to the first note of the phrase. I'm going to add a tenuto mark to the second note of the phrase, which when we are writing for humans, uh, like I'm imagining we're doing here, that means in the jazz style to play that note full value. Uh, we don't need to write it in for playback to do that, um, but I want to compose here as most like I am writing for real players as possible, which uh, you may very well be doing and just using the sample library um, for reference. So let's add in some other articulations. We have short, long, and let's put a nice scoop up to this note. Shift O for ornament. Just type the word scoop. There it is. I'm going to put an accent on those notes. Let's put a staccato on these. And that will actually trigger different samples. 
and then I will add a forte symbol and let's put a day crescendo down to a mezzo piano. Now let's take a listen. <laughs> Okay, really coming to life there. Let's add in a few more parts. Now, this symbol I'm going to add right here is one of the unique jazz ornaments that our library has called a doit. And to pull it up, you go Shift-O for ornament, and type doit. And that will play that back, and we'll hear that in just a moment. And the saxophones... Now, I'm going to add another unique jazz ornament called a rip down to a fall. Fortissimo dynamic. Repeat it. Down a half step. This is a jazz ornament that Dorco likes to call a plop, but in America we tend to call it a flop. Now this jazz ornament here is called a shake and that will trigger the shake samples. We don't need to delete the duplicate dynamics. I just do it so it looks the most like a real score as possible. All right, so let's check this out. All right, now just to demonstrate that these dynamics really are live and easily editable, I'm going to make this phrase here the extreme opposite. Let's make that pianissimo. And just so we can hear that, I'll make this pianissimo also. But for fun, I'm going to leave this fortissimo so it jumps out and scares us. Let's take a look at the uh, piano roll. So I have it on, locked on trombones, but let's get rid of that and go back to alto sax one. When we select the first note, it uh, shows us here there's a velocity, there's expression, because I've wrote fortissimo. The velocity's way up, the expression's way up, and you can see the expression came down before because it was on a decrescendo. And then when I click over to the piano note, look right here, the pianissimo rather, the velocity is all the way down almost, and the expression drops way down automatically just by putting in the dynamic symbol. So let's play back from here and hear the difference. <laughs> that was really, really, really exaggerated. So that was really quiet. Um, but you get the idea. Okay, moving on to second example to demonstrate some more advanced and hidden playing techniques. Atomic Big Band features uh, many different types of articulations and what Dorco calls playing techniques. Now I'm going to put uh, some standard written dynamics in here. Piano, crescendo, up to mezzo forte and as you can see here in the midi roll piano roll it will draw those in but atomic big band features specific crescendo samples in order to trigger those you need to apply a hidden playing technique so i will select all the notes to which i want them to apply shift p and then i'm going to put a parenthesis to hide it and then type crescendo. And this is specific to the Atomic Big Band playback te technique. This was created uh, custom for our library. So there's crescendo. So when I play this back, you're going to hear the default dynamics bring the velocity down, crescendo the expression up to mezzo forte, and you're, you will hear the sample of the crescendo. If this is desired, you can leave both on uh, but sometimes I choose to suppress playback of the graphical dynamics 
and just hear the playing technique dynamics. But let's hear what it sounds like all together. That was nice. Okay, let's add in some saxophone parts. Another of the special playing techniques is crescendo diminuendo. You can use the default graphical dynamics in tandem with the special playing technique or just one or the other. So I'll apply first the default dynamic type. I'm going to suppress the graphical dynamics here by selecting them, going to the properties pane and checking that box. And I can do it for all of them at once like this. Press playback, select all of these notes. I'm going to go shift P parentheses to hide it. Start typing it to get to come up crescendo diminuendo. We'll apply it to each of these notes and then we will use forte piano on these four. So that is going to use the forte piano key switch, not the default. Let's go ahead and do the same on this one. Let's listen to that. Perfect. Now I'm going to add another type of uh, hidden playing technique that uses our built-in gliss slash runs key switch. You can use the built-in Dorico glissandi, which is here, one of these squiggly line or straight line, and it will do a chromatic scale between those. So let's hear what that sounds like. If you like that, you can leave it, but in this case, I don't like it. So I'm going to suppress playback on that. I still have it there because I'm still imagining that I'm writing for a human player and they will need to see that line. But for playback, I'm going to add our special playing technique. Let's hear what that sounds like. Forte piano, list down to that note. much nicer okay now I actually do want a forte piano on this note too but because I've already applied the custom playing technique of gliss slash runs here I can't use another custom play technique on the same note so I'm going to rely on the uh, built-in dynamics to perform that forte piano you can see right here it hits a hard velocity and then brings the expression down which should mix nicely with the sample forte pianos here. Let's hear this whole example so far. All right, that works really well. Let's add in some more glissandi in the trumpets. Suppress playback of the built-in, add our custom playing technique. Let's also add in some dynamics. I'm going to add the Forte Piano, but suppress playback and then apply our sample of a Forte Piano. You can use both if you'd like, but it's more exaggerated. And then I'll copy this down and harmonize it. 
actually, I changed my mind. You know what I want to do on this note? I want to do a forte piano crescendo. So I'm going to add in the graphic for that, like that. You know, I'm just let's just undo what I just did. Undo those forte pianos. And then I'm going to, just to demonstrate, I'm going to add in a forte piano crescendo. Suppress playback of that. Use our forte piano crescendo sample. Great. And then copy that down. And for those of you who are familiar with our sample libraries, you may be thinking, but there's no forte piano key switch. There's a fort, I mean, there's no forte piano crescendo key switch. Um, there is a forte piano and there is a crescendo, but it's kind of a hidden feature that those are two that you can use together. So this custom playing technique applies both key switches to this note. All right, I'm going to enter in a few more notes uh, before we hear playback. Let's add a shake here. And I'm going to move all of this over the bar to the left. In Dorico, you can apply a trill as an ornament, either as a whole step or a half step, and it will trigger the appropriate trill key switch as either a whole step or a half step. And if you don't specify, it will be a whole step by default. Now, how did I do that? There he is. Okay. Okay, let's listen to this. Nice, and there is one more special playing technique I'd like to add, and that is a forte piano crescendo diminuendo. So you can think of that almost as a quadruple effect. Forte, then piano, then crescendo, and then diminuendo, all in one sample. Let's assign that to the saxophones. So first I will apply the graphic dynamics, which is not necessary for playback, but it does help us think more like we're writing for actual musicians to play, which we may be. It also helps us visually see what's happening. So I'm going to go forte, piano, crescendo. I, I won't necessarily define what it's crescendoing up to. And then we'll go back down to piano again. And that should stretch the duration of that note. Very good. And then while that's highlighted, I will suppress playback of that so it does not um, do anything with the expression or velocity. And then I will apply our custom playing technique, Forte Piano Crescendo Dominion Window on that note. And then I will just copy that down and uh, harmonize it. Let's listen to this all together. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about brass mutes. Let's enter some notes first. Let's 
So I'll scroll down to the trumpets here. There is atomically trumpet, mute select is none. Let's hear this trumpet section as is. I will put a dynamic in. All right, and actually, this should be a different note. Okay, now let's just pick a mute and apply it. So I will go to playing techniques, brass. Let's pick one of the harmon mutes, which is harmon mute stem in. Just apply that right there. And watch when I play back from here, it will apply the harm and mute stem in over here. And now if I'm thinking maybe I don't like that mute so much, let's pick a different mute. Mm, let's try a cup mute. And to end the mute section, all you have to do is click the open and it will take the mute out. So I'll suppress playback of those dynamics and enter in the sample forte piano crescendo, just as I did in the previous example, and then copy it in to the other notes. Okay, let's hear that phrase, muted, and then open. All right, now let's give the mutes to the trombones and talk about temporary mute opens and closes, like um, the plunger mute can do, for example. to uh, apply the plunger mute. I'm going to do this a different way than I did the cup mute. Not because it's a plunger, because you can do this with any mute type. There's two ways of applying a mute. You can uh, simply select just before you want to apply it, and then select after and write open. That's one way of doing it. Or for shorter phrases where mutes apply, I'll copy that over, you can select the whole phrase select the mute type and it will uh, put this bracket over it. Now I know from experience that I'm going to need to drag that back so it starts here or the mute key switch uh, will be too quickly applied before the note. And this looks more natural anyway. So let's hear uh, this trombone harmonized with plunger mute. Okay, so let's apply a fall to the second of each eighth note, and I'm going to need to elongate the mute release just a little bit more so that it does not snap back on before that fall is done. And I'm also going to go in here and use one of Dorico's best features, which is the ability to edit the played durations differently from the notated durations. You can see here, because this is a swing feel, it knows that the and is going to be later than if it were straight, but it's notating as though it were straight. You can also go here and make these notes slightly longer because they are a fall, so the mute doesn't get pulled out too early. Let's take a listen to this. All right, nice. Now what I was talking about initially when I mentioned the plunger mute was the temporary mute open and closes. So let's add those open symbols on the second eighth note, which kind of undoes the necessity for what I just did of elongating the falls on here so the mute didn't come out. But now we're going to go ahead and just uh, pull the mute out 
on those but it's just a plunger mute so it's not really in the horn anyway it's just you're just covering it with your hand and then opening it up on those notes and then i will put the close symbol on these but there is one more step to get to make sure the close symbol uh performs correctly um you do need to suppress playback of those because it doesn't do anything uh, the mute's already there it's just for a uh, human eyes to see but uh, we need to suppress playback so it doesn't interfere with any other articulations happening. Just like that. All right, let's see if we have a open close with a fall, open close, or close open rather, close open fall, close open. All right, there we have it. Now I have an idea of a couple of bass trombone notes to put in to counter this. Let's hear this all together. Here's a San Ionesco chart the Count Basie Orchestra recorded titled Basie Straight Ahead. All the horns you hear here are Atomic Big Band the horns playing back directly from Dorico. It also features our JB145 guitar, the real piano, a straight ahead bass, and straight ahead jazz drums. We will be releasing expression maps for those libraries in the future, but available to you today is a playback template for Dorico for Atomic Big Band the horns and all other sounds other than a trumpet, saxophone, or trombone will be generated and synchronized with the built-in sounds from Steinberg. Let's take a listen. Thank you. 